Some call him a super fan. Some say he is the man running the show at the University of Oregon Athletic Department. No matter your opinion of Nike co-founder Phil Knight, there is no denying the significant impact his contributions have had on the university. But those donations have, at times, come with some controversy. KZI 9 News reporter Dan Corcoran is live in the studio with a story you'll see only on KZI 9 News. Dan? Well, the millions of dollars in donations that Phil Knight has given over the years has had quite an effect. At one point, though, he stopped giving to the school, a moment that shed light on how quickly Knight's relationship with the university can change. And to some, it was evidence that Knight had bought his way into the decision-making process at Oregon. Understanding Phil Knight's role at the University of Oregon goes way beyond the checks that he's written for the school. He's donated millions upon millions of dollars to the green and yellow. Most of those dollars in recent years going to athletics. Having Phil Knight is huge. I mean, our sports wouldn't be half where they are today if it wasn't for that. The big time Oregon donor is watching the financial seeds he planted two decades ago blossoming today. A new basketball arena named after his late son opened in January. The football team battled its way to the national championship game. And on every athletic uniform, on every new sports facility, Knight's fingerprints or a Nike swoosh. The O brand is, is out there um, and now we've got to make sure that we capture that momentum and, and uh, keep it going. Especially after an incident 12 years ago when the money spigot suddenly switched off. It was the first sign that perhaps Knight might want things his way or no way. All that ended, uh, I think it was in 2000, over a dispute about the Workers' Rights Consortium. In 2000, protests erupted on the University of Oregon campus, urging then-President Dave Fronmeyer to sign a one-year contract with the Workers' Rights Consortium. What we do is we report on conditions in factories that make college logo uh, clothes and uh, for the schools that are our members. Nike has faced criticism over working conditions in its overseas factories. On campus, days of protests swayed Fronmeyer to join the WRC. And that infuriated Phil Knight. U of O economics professor Bill Harbaugh was there on campus during the WRC Phil Knight showdown. I can really understand why Phil Knight um, sort of flipped out. Knight, who had pledged more than $30 million to help renovate Autzen Stadium, suddenly pulled the plug on his donation. There were two competing organizations, one which hadn't really been fully formed, uh, with which the university made an initial alignment, which I think uh, was a mistake. His decisions and his influence starts to override maybe some of the mission of the university. Fronmeyer abruptly pulled the university out of the Workers' Rights Consortium. There was a major backlash against the university because it looked as though we were taking sides in a very, not only a partisan way, but in a very uh, unbalanced way. Now, though, the decision would make it appear Fronmeyer was taking Knight's side. Unwinding from that was, I think, the most difficult part of my presidency, and I'll freely admit that, that I made a mistake during that time. Sure enough, his choice to sever ties with the WRC led to the return of Knight and his stadium money. But Knight's relationship with the university administration had changed forever. He hasn't given a dime to the academic side of the university uh, since then. Despite efforts by administrators, most of Knight's contributions in the following decade all went to one place. They've made many, many efforts uh, to regain his favor, mostly by um, promoting what he clearly loves the best, which is the athletic side. But what would shifting his attention to sports mean for the school? Some say the answers have popped up in the form of PK Park and Matthew Knight Arena, now two of the top college facilities in the country. Phil and other executives at Nike want Oregon to have the best and the newest and the greatest because they have love for this institution. Others, though, believe there's more to it and point to Martin Smith, Bill Moose, Pat Kilkenny, even Mike Bellotti as examples of how Knight has truly changed the landscape at the U of O. If anyone knows how the Knight University relationship really works, it's Bill Moose. 
For 12 years, the former Oregon Athletic Director worked shoulder to shoulder with Knight. During my time, we would have our coordinators on offense and defense and their staffs go up to Beaverton and uh, uh, draw up what our, our plans were for the season and the playbook and all of that. And I know Phil was very interested in that. But Knight's interest, perhaps at times, crossed the line. As a former duck track athlete, it was no secret that he kept a close eye on how that team was being run. In 2005, Oregon's head track coach Martin Smith was said to be in Knight's crosshairs. Knight was critical of Smith's ability to bring in top-notch distance runners. Instead, Smith's emphasis was on sprinting and jumping. I think that was, that was the, the only concern uh, that, that I can recall with, with, that Phil had with Martin. Smith resigned with three years left on his contract, part of a half million dollar buyout. Through it all though, Moose stood by the coach. There wasn't a, a real rift between uh, Phil and myself at that time. I had to make a decision uh, as to the direction of the program. It was, at the very least, a test of the AD's relationship with Knight, similar in a way to Fronmeyer's handling of the WRC situation. Moose, though, would not reverse course, standing his ground with Smith, and doing so again later when the arena project got moving. Bill Moose was in the way. Knight's vision and Moose's implementation were on two different planes. Bill Moose didn't see the arena project the same way as Phil Knight, and essentially he was bought out. After years of success alongside Knight, Moose resigned as Oregon Athletic Director in 2007. Phil and I didn't talk uh, uh, for a couple of years, but we had no reason to. I was doing my thing and uh, uh, he was doing his. When I left Oregon, I left on good terms with Phil. Muddying the waters even more was how it was all handled. The bulk of Moose's $2 million contract buyout was financed by a close friend of Knight's, fellow U of O booster Pat Kilkenny. And then fueling the controversy even further, Fronmeyer hired the same man who bought out Moose's contract to be the new AD. Finally, this was the first time that somebody had been named. The move would make it more difficult than ever for the school to argue that its richest donors weren't actually pulling the strings, because now one of them clearly was. As athletic director, Kilkenny made a lot of substantial changes, a lot of substantial commitments of public funds. Well, that in large part is how Knight's critics see things. Tomorrow night, though, the culture change that's taken place in the last year or so, the new leaders at the school are much more open about what Knight means to Oregon. And then on Friday, what would the U of O look like without Phil Knight? Also, if you missed either of these first two parts of this series, we have them posted on KEZI. Com. And by the way, we did reach out to Mr. Knight and to Nike, but our invitation for an interview was turned down. Live in the studio, Dan Corcoran, KZI 9 News.